In the early hours of Sunday, massive explosions rocked the capital of Iraq's northern Kurdistan region Erbil. A dozen ballistic missiles hit secret Mossad bases there, reportedly leaving several Israeli operatives dead. Then, a statement came from Iran's Islamic Revolution Guards Corps, the IRGC. The force said it had fired powerful and precision strike missiles targeting a strategic center for conspiracy and evil acts of the Zionists. The IRGC said the attack follows Israel's recent crimes and promised that those atrocities would not go unanswered. The IRGC warned that further Israeli acts of aggression would receive a tough, decisive and destructive response. It underlined that the security of Iranian nationals was the red line of the country's armed forces. Israel has long been blamed for a wide range of anti-Iran measures, including acts of sabotage against its nuclear facilities and the assassination of Iranian scientists. Former Israeli officials have also confirmed the regime's role in the U.S. assassination of top Iranian General Qasem Soleimani in Iraq in 2020. And just last week, two IRGC officers were killed in an Israeli airstrike on the Syrian capital Damascus. At the time, the IRGC vowed that Israel would pay for the crime. In 2018, Israel killed a number of Iranians during an attack on an airbase near the city of Homs in western Syria. There have been a number of Iranian military advisors in Syria as requested by the Damascus government. Iran later retaliated with a barrage of missiles targeting Israeli military positions in the occupied Golan Heights. The missile strike on Erbil could be seen in the same light. Iraq's Kurdistan regional government officials have denied the presence of Israeli bases in Erbil, but the two sides enjoy friendly ties. Back in 2014, Israel bought Kurdish oil despite opposition from the central Iraqi government and threats to take legal action. Three years later, Israel endorsed an independence referendum carried out in the Kurdistan region. And last year, Erbil hosted a conference on normalization of ties between Iraq and Israel, prompting public outcry. The Kurdish regional government said it was not aware of the conference being organized. The IRGC says Iran's peace and security is a red line for the Iranian armed forces, and they will not allow any harm to come to the country. The IRGC says Iran's peace and security is a red line for Iranian armed forces, and they will not allow any harm to come to the country. Iran's retaliatory strike against an informal Israeli base in Iraq, which was in response to an act of Israeli aggression in Syria, which resulted in the deaths of two members of Iran's Revolutionary Guards, serves as another stark reminder to Israel's ruling elite, namely that Iran has the intent and the capability to effectively respond to acts of Israeli aggression either against Iran directly or against Iranian interests in the Middle East or against Iran's allies in the Middle East, such as Syria. And I am of the opinion that the, is the Iranian retaliatory strike against the unofficial Israeli base in Iraq will not be lost on the Israeli ruling elite. Syria and the Israeli regime are technically at war due to the latter's 1967 occupation of the Arab country's Golan Heights. The Israeli regime maintains a significant military presence in the territory, which it uses as a launchpad for its attacks on the Syrian soil. Israel has attacked Syria repeatedly through the past years. The reasons it provides fall short of being enough to justify the death and destruction that it has caused. Tel Aviv has been a key supporter of terrorist groups fighting to topple the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad since March 2011. The regime has also been providing safe passage and medical treatment to the Takfiri terrorists who flee the Allies' defensive operations. Israel's recent attack on the Syrian capital led to the martyrdom of two Iranian military advisors with the Islamic Revolution Guards Corps. The elite military force has been providing Syria with military advisory assistance in the face of foreign-sponsored militancy. Iran has uh, developed a very strong and a very robust armed forces 
which can meet Israeli aggression, nonetheless, the Israelis, because of the unconditional support they receive year on year from Washington, will continue to act in the most criminal way possible. Israel violates international law as well as international humanitarian law and refuses to implement dozens of resolutions or abide by recommendations put forward by relevant United Nations committees. Isn't it time the UN or other world countries gave this the attention that it deserves before the situation spirals out of control?